It, the people that are online watching today, our regular viewers, we honour you, welcome you. If you're ever in our area, come along and join us for a service. We'll make you feel right at home. Uh, this is an amazing church. Each service, as I see people go in and come out for the three morning services, there's a lot of interaction, a lot of friendship going on. And uh, I love that. That's a great environment. And so I, I, I want to see that keep growing and going forward. And we're talking about in 2017, commissioning the dream. And that's being prepared for a great life, the best life that's prepared for each one of us, preparing our lives to get into that best life, to walk into it. And so how do we do that? We think better so we can live better. And thoughts dictate our future. Our mindsets, our thinking starts to take us on a trail and into a path. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about baggage today. I brought along some baggage. I'm going to bring some old baggage here because I'm going to do some stuff with it, with it in a little while. And so old baggage, a lot of times we can have baggage from the past that hinders us. Anybody ever had some baggage? And, and a lot of times in that baggage are, are thoughts of regret, of upset, of hurt. And a lot of times this baggage comes because we've gone through situations and we've relied on past understanding to get through that situation rather than a wonderful resource in heaven called God. And so this, and it didn't turn out the way, so we put in another disappointment. We put in another hurt. We put in another something else. And that baggage starts to really weigh us down. And if we get into a a situation like that, we look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and it says, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us. Life is a race. Imagine trying to run a race with this on your back and with this on your back and a couple tied to your shoes and one coming off an earring. It only takes 20 pounds to rip off an ear. You'd lose a few. There's 50 pounds in these things. And so that would be hard to carry. And so let's throw off, it says the next few words. Let's, everyone say, throw off. Let's throw off the bags. Don't worry, that's the way they handle them at the airport anyway. (laughs) Let's throw off the baggage. Let's throw off the extra baggage. Let's get rid of it. And so if you're watching online and you're a baggage handler, we love you anyway. You're welcome along to church. And so... (laughs) Well, and so let's have a look at these thoughts can come and start to do things in our lives. Sometimes you can have a thought like this. You know, I've heard this phrase and it's so wonderful sounding, but it's not absolutely true. It says, God is never late and He is never early. He is right on time. Well, that's true for some small instances. Never late, never early, and He's just right on time. But if we try and put a blanket statement over every situation in life, that could cause Him to seem immovable and unmerciful because there's sometimes I want him to turn up early there's sometimes I need him to turn up early but then there's sometimes I don't want him coming around too early I want some grace and some space to work things out so I don't get struck by lightning not that he's ever going to do that but let me just go into that and just details so I see in scripture how God is early on some occasions And let's have a look at that. And I I just point out that Jesus made water into wine ahead of his time. He said to his mother, it's not my time. She said, go and do it anyway. And out of honour, he just got up and did it. (laughs) It was honour to his mum. And God anointed David to become king many, many years before he was king. Another situation that God was early is Jesus heals the Canaanite woman. She was not a Jewish woman. She was a Cain. He healed her daughter, sorry. And the situation there was that Jesus says, no, I've been sent by the Father to the Jewish, to, the, to, to, to Israel. And this Canaanite lady says, yeah, but you know, heal my baby. And, the, and Jesus says, it's done as you believe. And so he did it ahead of time. He's early. And it's, and God showed up early. But there's other times when he shows up late. Thank God sometimes God's late. Let me explain. I see in Scripture how God is late on occasions. When Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, he was sort of getting slow getting out because he didn't want to leave. And the angel said, hurry up, the thing's going to burn. So he pulls, pulls him out. And then and all of a sudden he's standing there and says, I want to go in this city. And then God speaks to him and says, I cannot. He said, hurry up and move because I cannot do what I need to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. Rain down coals and fire and all that until you've gone. God had to hold back judgment 
Do you know in the Bible, it shows very clearly that God waits. He does not want to judge. He is late to judge. In fact, in the Bible, it says in 2 Peter, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but he's long suffering. He's waiting for everyone on the planet to come to him. He does not want to judge. So he's early to bless and late to judge. He holds back judgment. He holds, but he can't wait to bless you. So I like to turn it around and say that. So these are some areas where we've got to look and say, throw off, (laughs) throw off the baggage. I said last service I was going to throw one at a camera to make it look like 3D for the online viewers, but it mightn't have been safe for our camera equipment. What baggage? Well, we've been through that, and we've got to look now at the fact that God doesn't want us just to have baggage. He wants us to have luggage. And so I've got a great story, an illustration of luggage in our lives. And my wife and I like to go away on holidays sometime. And this is our luggage that we take with us. Well, inside this luggage, you can fit two more pieces of luggage. And, and so we can take this on holidays. And I put my, my, my clothing in one little small one on the inside. And then we get down, down into another country where there's cheaper, you know, things. We go and Steve pulls out the other bags. And now Steve came with one, but he can go home with three. And then... Carmen goes shopping and Steve gets to fill them back up again and walk home with three bags full, three bags full. And so he goes home and he's got, but inside it's not baggage now, it's luggage and it's not carrying all this junk, it's carrying treasure. Because the moment we walk through the front door and dad's carrying twice as many bags as he had before, my kids look and think, what's in there for Christmas? And mum takes this in, in inside and we go upstairs and she's got this special room in our, in our bedroom. She's got a closet. It's big closet full of, it's just for presents. Oh, kids would love to see that present closet. Kids, kids would love. And so she gets the bags, takes them out and fills up her present closet with all the treasures. And Steve gets in there sometimes and looks around treasures. But he doesn't, mum doesn't know about it except for today. And so... See, what God wants to do is He wants us to throw off the baggage, the past and the junk that cripples us and holds us down. And He wants us to take up luggage full of life and treasure and rich thinking and promises. God has so much in store for each one of us. He loves us. He wants more. He doesn't want us to be held back. Romans 6, chapter 14 and 15 says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. God has a plan to put His love and mercy and good thoughts and good future in each of our lives. Rich treasures. My wife's going to share how each one of us can throw off baggage and what we're to do to go forward. So God has given us a word that this year we are to commission the dream in 2017. That God is showing us about our future, about our purpose, about our destiny. And he wants us to go forward to that purpose. And so the book of Hebrews that my husband just shared, it said to throw off the baggage that tries to hinder your progress. Throw off the baggage that tries to hold you back. And in the first service, as we were sharing this message, God showed me a picture. And the picture he showed me is if you were going to go down to a valley, how many know that you could take a lot of baggage to a valley? Because when you get to the end, you could just kick it down there. Or you could put it, strap it in, you could roll down to the bottom of the valley with a whole lot of baggage. But if you are going to the mountaintop, How many know that if you are going to the mountaintop, you've got to strip off some baggage when you are going to a higher place? And God has said that he is taking you to a higher place, a greater place, and it is time to prepare. So therefore, if you're going to a higher place, if you are going to a mountaintop, you have to strip off the baggage that would try to hold you back. Turn to the person beside you and say, I'm glad I'm going to the mountaintop with you. I'm glad I'm going to the mountaintop with you. And so you have to let go of the baggage that would try to hold you back. What is this extra baggage? And this month we're going to begin to drop some baggage this month. This month is going to be dropping baggage month. I want every Sunday to you, co- you to come with expectation. We are going to drop some more baggage. We're going to drop some more baggage so that we are free and light to be able to go forward to what God has called us to do. So this morning I want to talk about dropping the baggage of bitterness. 
You know, how do you dump the baggage of bitterness? Bitterness tries to come around every single person's life. It tries to come around our life to hold us back, to make us stagnant so that we cannot go forward to what God has called us to do. And so how do we dump the baggage of bitterness? Number one, we have to recognize if we're carrying the baggage of bitterness. I was talking to a lady in the first service, and she said, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm a very happy person. And when you started talking about bitterness, I thought, I don't have bitterness. I'm a happy, positive person. And she said, by the end of the message, God had showed me a place where I had a root of bitterness towards someone, and I was able to just drop that baggage. Can I tell you, we have to recognize if there's bitterness in our life, we open our heart up, and we say, God, show me if there is any bitterness in me, because we want to drop some baggage this month. Acts chapter 8 verse 23 says, I can see deep bitterness has poisoned you. See, when we hold on to bitterness, when we have the baggage of bitterness around our life, it poisons us. It's a poison to us that holds us back from the greater things, that holds us back from the purpose that God has on our life. And so the enemy loves to come to try to poison you. But we serve a God who says that you will know the word and the word will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so we're going to dump some baggage of bitterness today. You know, our feelings of bitterness, anger, resentment, they can seem justified. You know, they can seem justified because of what somebody did or what somebody didn't do. But can I tell you, they are never justified before God. They are a destructive tool to hold us back. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19 says, don't let bitterness or resentment spoil your marriage. Can I tell you, it doesn't just spoil your marriage. Bitterness can come in to try to spoil your marriage, try to spoil your church relationships, try to spoil the relationships at work, try to spoil the relationships you have with your family, try to spoil the relationships you have with friends. Bitterness comes in to try to poison and spoil relationships. And so we have to have our guard up that we recognize that the enemy tries to bring bitterness to hold us back and to contain us. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 says, do not be bitter. Don't be bitter. Don't allow that bitterness to have root in your life. And that's why we're going to drop the baggage of bitterness. The second one, how do you dump the baggage of bitterness, is you have to allow and make a determination that you're not going to hurt other people with that bitterness. Now, you may recognize there's some bitterness in there, and we're going to deal with some of that today at the end of the service, but you have to determine, I'm not going to hurt anybody else with that bitterness that's inside of me. I'm not going to allow that bitterness to come out of me and begin to hurt any other person. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 says this, Look after each other so that not one of you will fail to find God's best blessing. Let's say that. God's best blessing. God's best blessing. You know, God spoke to us and said, we're preparing. And he said, we're preparing so that no one misses out. He's giving us the opportunity to prepare. He's giving us the opportunity to to dump some baggage. Why? So that no one misses out on God's best blessing. It says, look out so that no one will, no one will miss out and fail to find God's best blessings. Watch out that no bitterness takes root among you. For as it springs up, it can cause deep trouble, hurting many in their spiritual lives. Now, I want to look at that word trouble. In the Greek, this word means this, to harass or to annoy. It refers to something being on the inside of someone that it bothers them and it upsets them so much that they are constantly pestered by the thoughts of this thing. Anybody ever been there? Let's be honest, let's be honest, where you are constantly pestered by the thoughts of that very thing. You are constantly pestered. You're constantly annoyed. You're constantly annoyed by the thoughts of that thing, of how that person may have wronged you, or how that person came up short, or how that person didn't follow through. It says that's what the word trouble means in the Greek, that you are constantly harassed and annoyed. That word for trouble also means a person who is constantly constantly troubled, harassed, and annoyed by thoughts of how someone 
has wronged them. Has anyone ever had someone wrong you here? Lift up your hand if you have someone wrong you. Put your hands back down. Anybody had anybody wrong them in the last two months? Okay? We have to recognize that people will wrong us. And this scripture says that if you don't deal with that bitterness, it will harass you and it will annoy you and it will go over and over and over in your thoughts. And that's a strategy of the enemy to put that baggage on you. So you're not free to go forward. You're not free to run the race. You're not free to live your destiny. But Hebrews tells us, throw off the baggage. Let go of the baggage. It gives us the keys. It gives us the life. Let go of the baggage. Throw off that baggage so you are fit and ready to run the race that God has had before you. Instead of moving along in life, if you keep that bitterness on the inside, you are stuck in the muck. You are stuck in one place. And I I know you people. None of you want to be stuck where you are. You have a purpose on your life. You know that I'm glad for what's brought me this far, but I know there's something greater. Nobody here wants to get stuck in the muck. Nobody wants to get stuck where they are. And bitterness tries to stick you in one spot where you do not go forward. But God says that we are going to throw off the baggage of bitterness. And this verse goes on to say in Hebrews 12, 15, it says, look after each other so that no one will fail to find God's best blessing. Watch out that no bitterness takes root among you, for as it springs up, it causes deep trouble. We looked at that word. And then it says, hurting many in their spiritual lives. That word hurting in the Greek, in another translation, it uses the word defiled. That word hurting or defiled in the Greek means this, to spill, to spot, or to stain. To spill, to spot, or to stain. And so what that means is that if someone doesn't deal with the bitterness in their life, it will not be long, and it will come out of their mouth, and it will spill on someone else, and it will try to stain somebody else, and it will try to put something. How many know that when you get a stain on something, that's annoying because it's hard to get out? It will try to put a stain on someone else. It'll try to spill on someone else. And so this scripture says that, that you are not hurting, that you don't defile other people where their spiritual life is hindered. Do you know I've met people that they are bitter about something that didn't even happen to them? It happened to somebody else. They just heard about it, and they got that stain, that spoil, that spill on them, and now that bitterness is holding them back from their destiny, from their purpose, and it didn't even happen to them. So we have to look at the Word of God here that says, don't allow that hurt to come and and hurt people's spiritual life. And so Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34, it says, for out of the mouth speaks what is filled in the heart. If you don't dump the baggage of bitterness, it will keep trying to come out of your mouth. You may be having a pleasant conversation with somebody, and all of a sudden that bitterness wants to come out. You can be trying to speak about your future, and all of a sudden something from your past is coming out of your mouth, and that bitterness is trying to spill out of your mouth again. If you don't dump the baggage of bitterness. Psalm 64 verse 3 says, They aim their bitter words like arrows straight at my heart. We have to recognize that, that there are bitter words that people try to speak And it has no place in our life. We don't need to listen to other people's bitterness. We don't need to take other people's bitterness because we are dumping our own baggage. And we're not taking on their baggage of bitterness either. So we need to be free from bitterness. James chapter 3 verse 10 to 11 says, Out of the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. Brothers, this isn't the way it should be. This isn't the right way it should be. A spring doesn't send forth both fresh and bitter water out of the same opening. God has designed us to use our mouth for good, to use our mouth to be a fountain of life, to use our mouth to bless, not to curse, to lift up, not to tear down. And so we have to be people who simply need to dump some baggage, dump some baggage of bitterness so that it doesn't come out of our mouth and hurt someone else. I heard a story about a woman. This is not in our church. I heard this story. It's a true story. And this woman got very upset at the music director at her church. 
And she was very angry about how the music was going, and she didn't like the songs, and she didn't like this. And so she started going home, and she started to spill and to stain this on, on top of her family. She would share with her husband. She would share with her children how she didn't like the music director, and she didn't like the music, and she didn't like this, and she didn't like that. And it wasn't very long that that husband and those children who had never had anything negative towards that music director before, pretty soon they didn't like the music director either. Pretty soon they were coming into church. They weren't lifting their hands anymore. Pretty soon they, they didn't even want to be in the music service. They wanted to stay out until the music time was over because she had actually spoiled and put a stain on them of her bitterness. It didn't take long, and that woman's husband and children, they didn't even want to go to church anymore. They didn't even want to serve God anymore. Can I tell you, we have to be careful about the words that we speak out to other people. We are meant that things will happen we will get hurt, and we are to take it to the cross. We are to take it to Jesus. We're not meant to go spilling it out. My husband and I have a rule that when we feel uh, upset about something, when we feel hurt, when we feel someone's wrong, we don't even talk to each other about it. We're not even spilling on each other about it because we're going to go to God because we don't want to stain each other with any bitterness. And so we have to look at this and realize, God, my life is meant to build up. Never to tear down. The third one of how do you dump the baggage of bitterness is you have to prepare and make sure you keep the ground of your heart clean from bitterness. Your job is to keep the ground of your heart good. Our job is to preach the word. Our job is to preach the word so that it will go into the ground of your heart and it will bear fruit and it will bring life and things will change in your life. But your job is to come in with the ground of your heart ready, the ground of your heart soft, the ground of your heart prepared for the word of God to go in. And you know, the scripture says that there's all kinds of ground, but there's only one ground, the good ground, that will produce the 30, 60, and 100 fold. There's one ground that when the word goes into that ground, it bears the fruit of the great life that God has in store. And so it's your job to keep the ground of your heart good and ready and to keep the, the, the weeds and the bitterness out of your heart. It's easy to forget when you're upset that you have a choice. You can get bitter or you can get better. You can hang on or you can let go. You can carry that load which hinders you, or you can dump some baggage. It's easy to forget that you have the choice to make. The choice is yours, and the choice is to protect the ground of your heart. Out of anything in the world, you want to say, I'm protecting the ground of my heart. I'm protecting the ground of my heart. That bitterness comes knocking on your door. You feel that hurt from what somebody did, and you say, no, I'm protecting the ground of my heart. I'm going to let that go. I'm not holding on to that bitterness. Somebody else comes around and they want to share their bitterness with you. You say, I'm sorry. I'm protecting the ground of my heart. I need to keep the ground of my heart good so that when the word of God comes, it will bear the fruit that it is meant to bear. Luke chapter 8 verse 15 says, and the seeds that fell on the good soil represent the honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word. They cling to it and patiently produce a huge harvest. Why is it that a crowd of people can come and everybody hears the same word? Some people leave and their life is forever changed. And some people leave exactly the same as when they came in. What's the difference? The same word has been preached. The difference is the ground of the heart. If the ground of the heart is clear and good, then you will get a greater revelation. You will understand something that will bring truth and bring freedom to you. And the number one thing that tries to crowd into that ground to make it so you can't receive the word of God is bitterness. It tries to hold you back from your future. But we're going to dump the baggage of bitterness today. We're going to let go of some baggage so that you are free to move forward. The soil is what makes the difference. Jeremiah chapter 4 says, plow the hardness of your heart, otherwise the good seed will be wasted among the thorns. The bitterness is the thorn. So it says, plow up the ground of your heart. You say, well, I don't think there's any bitterness in me. 
just open your heart up and say, God, if there is any bitterness in me, show me. Because I'm ready to dump some bitterness today. I'm ready to let go of some bitterness. If it's in there, God, show me. And, you know, as I was preparing for this message, and I'm always dumping baggage. Like, you know, I'm always letting go of things. I'm always letting go of baggage. As fast as it comes, I want to get rid of it. And as I'm preparing for this message, God showed me a picture of something that I'd been hanging on to. And I said, Lord, I don't want to hang on to that. I want to dump the baggage. I want to let go so that I am free to be who you have called me to be. Do you know that God has a great call on your life and that God is speaking about your future saying there's something greater. You're not going to roll down to the valley. No, you are climbing to the mountaintop. There is something greater for your life, but you're going to have to go lighter. You're going to have to go lighter and that will involve dumping the baggage of bitterness. See, if we have bitterness in our life, it will hold us back. But if we dump the bitterness, greater revelation comes. Greater freedom comes. Your ears are open to hear what God is speaking to you more clearly. The Word of God will come alive. When that bitterness is gone, the Word of God comes alive like never before. You hear with fresh ears. You receive with a fresh heart. And so it's our responsibility to keep the ground of our heart clean. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 says, If you grow a healthy tree, you'll pick healthy fruit. If you grow a diseased tree, you'll pick worm-eaten fruit. The fruit will tell you about the tree. How many are ready to have some good fruit on the tree? You know, God has said this is a new year. You know, 2017, it means newness. I believe that newness means new fruit, new evidence of God's word in your life, new revelation, newness of what God is going to do on the inside of you, new fruit. And so the health of the tree, the health of the ground is what produces the new fruit in our life. And so to do that, we have to drop the baggage of bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 in the Message Bible says this, make sure that no one gets left out on God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for the weeds of of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin the whole garden. Do you know God is preparing something amazing for you? We've looked at Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. For God says, I know that I have a plan for you, says God. It is a good plan, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. But he says, in this plan, you got to go lighter. In this plan, you got to drop some baggage. In this plan, you're going to have to let go of some things. And how, are there situations where people have really wronged you? People have really hurt you. Yes, there are. And I'm not saying that it wasn't real, and I'm not saying that it didn't happen, and I'm not saying that that somebody didn't make a mistake, or somebody didn't lie, or somebody didn't cheat, or somebody didn't do this or that to you. I'm not saying it didn't happen. But what I am saying is if you hold on to the baggage, it's holding you back from something great. It's holding you back. It's actually not doing anything to them. It's only holding one person back. And that baggage is holding you back. And you cannot go to the mountaintop strapped with the wrong baggage. You can't go to the top strapped with the baggage of bitterness. And if there are things in your life that you know you need to let go of, I want to tell you today is the day. We sang a song today. The last song we sang says, today is the day. Now is the time. Now is the time to walk lighter. Now is the time to, to walk freer. Now is the time to drop the baggage of bitterness and let some things go. And people say, well, isn't it hard to drop bitterness? Don't you have to go to counseling for years? Can I tell you, talking about things over and over and over again is not always the solution. What you need to do is you need to go to Jesus. And I'm going to share a scripture to you today that will make this easy for you. How many like things to be a little easy sometimes? You know, some people make things so complicated. Let's make things easy. Let's do it the Bible way and make it easy. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, get rid of your bitterness, your hot tempers, your anger, your loud quarreling, your cursing, your hatred. Be kind to each other, sympathetic, forgiving each other as God has forgiven you through Christ. Forgiving each other as God has forgiven you. To make it easy, if you open your mouth and you say, I forgive that person as God has forgiven me. 
That's how easy it is. I forgive that person as God has forgiven me. And then you never talk about it ever again. It's over. You don't got to go tell that person. You don't got to confront them and say, by the way, I forgave you in church this morning. <laughs> Come on, you don't got to put that on them. Don't go putting it on somebody else. No, 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 no. I forgive them the way that God has forgiven me. And then you never speak of it again. It's gone. Do you know the Bible tells us that when God forgives us, he takes our sins, he takes our wrongs, he takes that long list of all those naughty things that you think nobody knows you did, but God knows. He says he takes them all and he puts them in the sea of forgetfulness. Do you know where that baggage of bitterness needs to go this morning? In the sea of forgetfulness. We got to dump some baggage in the sea of forgetfulness and say, God, you have promised me a future. God, you have said you are taking me forward. God, you said you have great plans for me. God, you said you are preparing me for something greater. But I've got to go lighter. So God, today I drop the baggage of bitterness into the sea of forgetfulness. And I do not speak of it any longer. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. I know you somebody say, well, I could go home and think about it. I could do it later on my own. I could do it, I could do it, you know, this evening. Most of you will forget by then. We need to do it now. I believe there's no time like now than to say, God, I release that person. I forgive them the way that you have forgiven me. And so that's what I'm going to encourage you to do. If you're watching with us online, I want to encourage you, drop the bag of bitterness. Don't wait till later. Don't wait till another time. Now is the time to walk lighter. Now is the time to walk freer. Now is the time to begin to embrace your future and your destiny that God has for you. And so I want to encourage every person in this room to just close your eyes and bow your head for a moment. Jesus said that he died on the cross for the sins of mankind. And we recognize this morning that that's our sin. That's our situation, but we also recognize that's the sins of every other person on the planet. He said, I died for everyone's sins. I died for them all. And today we say, God, I forgive the way that you have forgiven me. Yes. And so today, if you recognize that you've got some baggage, some baggage of bitterness there, I want to encourage you. Now's the time to drop the baggage. God has something great in store for you. It's called the mountaintop. And you got to go there lighter. So this morning, with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you recognize there's some bitterness there, lift your hand today. We're, gonna, we're just going to do this together. Why not do it together? Why not do it together? Let's lift our hands before God and say, God, I recognize. Let's speak this out loud today. Say, God, I recognize. God, I recognize. There's some bitterness. There is some bitterness in my life. In my life. Forgive me. Forgive me. I've held on. That I've held on to that bitterness. To that bitterness. Today, God. Today, God. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. And I respond. I respond to your word. To your word. And today I choose. Today I choose to speak. To speak with my mouth. With my mouth. God, I forgive. God, I forgive that person. That person. Or those people. Or those people. God, I forgive them. I forgive them the way that you. The way that you forgive me, forgiven me, and so God today, so today, I drop that baggage, I drop that baggage in the sea of forgetfulness, sea of forgetfulness, and I make a choice, make a choice to never speak of it again, never speak of it. I make a choice, make a choice to release those people, to release those. And people. Father, I thank you, Father, I thank you that I'm lighter today. I'm lighter today. I thank you, thank you that you've called me, 